Chapter 26, The Path of Most Resistance. Joshua never underwent psychoanalysis. Still, it didn't take some fake news deep shrink who majored in psychology at Tufts to realize Joshua pursued the comedic pursuit of making strangers laugh for a living because being shipped off to sleepaway camp in Kent, Connecticut three months a year every summer for a decade in a row without any burning desire to attend never gave him the impression of being the center of his parents' universe one iota. <laughs> it's not as if Joshua was such a perpetual drag on his parents' time. After they came home from work, he'd hear them talk about their work day over dinner, and then retreat into his room to play with his blocks, bang his G.I. Joes together, way past the appropriate age to do so. As he made gung-ho turn Cobra Commander into his personal uh, gimpy bitch on demand. When Joshua got a bit older, he'd organize his basketball card collection, consisting of almost every rookie who played for the original USA Dream Team, minus the Michael Jordan one and the Bird Magic Combo rookie card, because combined together they cost more than an ounce of Maui Wowie in 1996. In junior high, uh, Joshua decorated the walls of his bedroom with an unoccupied top bunk with cut-up pictures of all his hair metal gods from Circus Magazine which also included non-pretty boy faces, such as the Freddy Krueger of Shredding, McMars from Motley Crue. But sometime in the early 1990s, Joshua's parents decided to repaint his lost in fantasy island room. The Italian painter took one look at Joshua's wailing wall of metal and says, there's a lot of girly men on your wall. And Joshua's heavy metal high pilot trilogy, which he pitched to the EVP of VH1 Classic of Manhattan. His younger teen character replies to the Italian painter with, I'm sorry, are my hair metal gods not manly enough for you? Dominic, I ain't no fag, Scalante. Joshua would never forgive himself for letting his father bully him into inviting his friend Ari to see Motley Crue in the sixth grade at the Nassau Coliseum during their revitalized, hit-heavy Dr. Feel Good tour with Warren as the opening act after promising to bring his closer friend uh, Coop at the time, who he shared a much deeper history with prior. Coop didn't talk to Joshua for a solid five years afterwards, and they hung out plenty in elementary school, going to um, every movie conceivable at Movie Land and Yonkers all the time, because Coop was an only child whose parents were both lawyers at the same law firm the father owned, so they could afford a pair of smoking hot au pairs from Switzerland who tasted good inside and out, guaranteed. Coop was a mensch. Before he became a top realtor in Manhattan, he was the Nino Brown of weed dealing at, at Harvard University and would let Joshua's younger brother sell major weight for him back home and let him off the hook no problem if he was ever light 500 here, 800 bones there. Plus, when Joshua had his stand-up comedy bringer show at the New York uh, Comedy Club, Coop's presence among his Edgemont High School class of 99 caused the biggest stir. Coop also delivered the most touching emotive praise after Joshua's friend Ari, who was still a mensch in his own right simply stating in a stupefied, teetering on awe-inspired state, awesome. Coop approached Joshua outside the New York Comedy Club and said, great show, very funny stuff, bro. With an all-knowing, stony Buddha assurance, Joshua replied, thanks, Coop, but I'm still so broke my Hebrew name is under judicial review. Coop refused to give in to Joshua's feeble attempt at self-deprecation, which never captured his true funny man essence entirely and says, stick with it, you're funny. Understand this is more emotive encouragement Joshua ever received from his own flesh and blood, being his younger brother and two parents. But as they say in the first hilarious Batman Lego movie, you get to choose your friends, not your family. And Coop's push for Joshua to continue down the pursuit of getting Lady Laugh off a long time was a noble pursuit worth fighting for. With all his funny Jew bone, God bless, might. Joshua developed a later-in-life friendship with his adopted valley brother Jay from Southern California, who gave a recent more rousing Mick-type pep talk from Rocky when he said, Never lose your edge, JK. Now Joshua was 43, turning on 44, still pursuing the path of most resistance. His parents wouldn't acknowledge his debt common to record resist this, nor would his younger brother. Joshua's wife claims to have overheard portions of his Do It All Dead Year podcast from downstairs. Because he's such a loudmouth, crazy man Jew, who's louder than Busta Rhymes at midnight showing of higher learning. Still, Joshua had produced 164 episodes of pure stand-up comedy-driven material since his lucky number three Samuel was born. And she never listened to one episode from start to finish, which screams, I stopped believing in you after our unplanned lucky number three was born. Before Joshua met Anna, he was hanging out with an old school high school bud after he did a meh open mic set at some random shithole bar in Midtown East outside 
Madison Square Garden. And he says, you be okay with dying alone? And you're really in no rush to be in a relationship again, ever? The reality is, ever since Joshua fell in love with making Lady laugh a long time, he never felt alone when he was working again. Plus, God didn't give Joshua three unplanned kids to have a panic attack over it. Obviously, God never had the same confidence in Pete Davidson. If Joshua was out with his three kids by himself, which was often, a stranger would say, you got three. You've got your hands full. And Joshua would say, if any of my books ever become bestsellers, and if my wife agrees to an open marriage with Katy Perry, my hands would be full. And yeah, all three were unplanned. Obviously, I never mastered the art of the pump fake. Then Joshua would hear uh, the same random stranger comment on how pretty his lucky number three boy Samuel is. And he'd reply in a relaxed manner because he was accustomed to the unsolicited praise so often by now. And reply, live, and reply with, he's a very pretty he. I envision a future where my son Chosen Curls was bound to, woo, will be fronting a poison cover band, no problem. Having nothing but a good time come rain or shine. These lines would generate streams of laugh laughter almost every time. Joshua wasn't ready to relinquish his God-given edge just yet.